All right, I'm back, and this is part two of the uh, talk of Ari Dan vlog. Uh, I'm not going to upload it all as one piece, of course. So. Two parts. Where was I? And then. Bah, 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 bah. So, maybe I just have to <laughs> let go and let God. Because, you know. <clears throat> in the end, <clears throat> it wasn't more than I could afford, and we are getting a house. Maybe. Maybe the squatter's in it, so we'll see. We literally, the day before she went to Peggy Big, we rented a house in the same neighborhood in anticipation of the good news from Peggy Big. Um, because we have to move because of this landlord situation. Oh, the landlord situation. The landlord, after we told her everything, she found out, okay, they're business people and they're going to live in this house that I'm renting them for a uh, normal amount of money. Uh, 30 days later, she comes and says, oh, I don't want you to live here. I don't want you to do your business here. Uh, my initial reaction was like, I kind of just blanked out. I was like, oh, okay, fuck it then. I'm, we're out. I'm not paying shit. Fine. Fine. I don't care. Let's go. Uh, <laughs> we got a house on the way anyway. Right? <laughs> that's, what, that's my thought. I was like, you know, I processed it real fast. I was like, I'm not, I'm not going to get a shakedown here from this woman. I just paid her two months deposit on my rent. That's, I paid her 13000 the rent was four five. Four five times three twelve. Thirteen. Um thirteen thousand five hundred. I paid her. One month ago. One month. And then she comes back on the next rent day talking about nah I'm not gonna and Ariane of course. You know Filipino people stay calmer, I think. <laughs> than I do. Uh, I don't know. It's a, it's their way of arguing that uh, it starts out calm. The arguing is always uh, more it's more pliable, right? I feel like uh, we in the U.S. someone fucks up or fucks us over our initial reaction is oh, they fucked us. Fuck them. But I think here it's slightly different. Like, oh, I feel fucked with. Maybe there's some reason or some explanation or some way to work this out amicably. Um, so, right, so I, I, I didn't get, I never got really fucked over that much in the U.S. You know, if someone at a restaurant or something fucks up, they they, you, they give you cold food or whatever. You wait too long for your food. They're like, well, look, you fucked up. You got to fix this. Uh, but here, it's like less accusatory. Uh, less, uh, the stances aren't so solid. Everything is more negotiable. Pliable. Uh, elastic. So, she talks to her a little bit, and it comes out there. Well, if you pay six thousand a month instead of four or five, you can stay. Uh, and I'm still like, no, fuck that. We're not doing that. I'm not gonna get a shakedown. Uh, we got some leverage. I'm not I'm not gonna. I'm not dealing with that bullshit. I'm not. I'm not eating shit here. All right. This was a fair trade. We did a fair deal. We paid your money, your two months deposit for your roach infested house. This house was infested with roaches when we bought it. She didn't say anything. In fact, in her ad, she was like, I want this house to go to a family. And uh, I came in, I was like, well, I got cash. I do have a family. <laughs> my family may stay here. Um, this will be my office. She didn't say shit. 
we went to the house, we went and looked, and this was during the daytime, we went to the house, everything's nice, fine. Okay, everything's okay, it's a little bit fucked up, light switches don't work, uh, you know, some of the things you got in here is you know, dusty and broke, but it has fiber, it has access to fiber internet, and that's literally the number one reason I came here because it had access to fiber internet and I needed that in order to do my teaching just for fast internet in general uh, so we do the deal and sign the paper and she goes she didn't say a goddamn thing about the roaches the night comes I'm sitting there Arianne's over beside me. We're talking or something. And Arianne says, well, whoa, 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 whoa. When I say roaches, uh, I mean rad roaches from Fallout. This, like, this big, just infested. They came out at night and they were just everywhere on you, on it in out running what you wanted a family to live here in this squalor everywhere so she has these like bamboo panels they're like little long bamboo panels uh, but they're round and empty on the end hollow on the inside so they're just a haven of fucking roaches and mice. And whoever lived here before us didn't take care of it. It was derelict and abandoned and uh, destroyed. This place was a piece of shit. We came in, fixed it up, um, got rid of the bugs and the infestations, and cleaned it, and worked on the electrical, uh, the electricity. I mean, this place had no uh, circuit breakers. So we came in and fixed this place up, uh, and the very next month she comes with some bullshit. And I was, I just wasn't having. It. I was like, no way. But then I shut up and I walked away and I let Ariane talk to her. And Ariane talked her down from six thousand to five thousand for six months. Uh, so we paid her the five thousand. She didn't give us a receipt. I'm like, oh, hey, we need that. I didn't say that. Ariane's like, get the receipt from her. She was gone. I texted her and I was like, okay, I'll come right now. She's like, no, I'm out. Da, 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 da. I, don't, I don't have a receipt. Anyway, we ended up not getting a receipt for this past month. That's fine. Uh, at the time, I'm thinking, okay, that's fine, whatever. We're here. We're going to pay 5000 instead of instead of 4500 That's an okay compromise. Uh, a week, a week after, <laughs> week after that, we got a letter uh, from the barangay. It says we've been summoned to barangay court uh, for this dispute. So then she's evicting us. And uh, we have we have ten days, but we have a uh, a business, a busy business. There's no way we could move that fast. So now we're running around scrambling, and it's just been hectic and stressful. Um, and I've been sick. I, I was sick with like a flu. It was not good. It has not been good. So here we are. We're going to move far, far away. It's about four hours drive, three and a half four hours drive up the mountains to a place called Montalban um, in the subdivision where our cousin lives who recommended the broker um, we've rented we've rented a house there uh, where we can do our business and they have agreed in advance that we can do our business there so we'll see how that see how that goes and that's also the same neighborhood where our house that is currently reserved is at. Uh, but it has squatters in it, so I don't 
I don't know what's gonna happen there. We're gonna have to figure that out. Uh, but I know for goddamn sure. I don't care what the date, do, when, how. If that, if the house that is reserved is open, I'm going in that motherfucker. I'm not. It's not gonna happen. I'm not gonna. Not, no. Because they told me months and months. No, you can't go. You can't just be a squatter. No, the homeowners association will never let that happen. No, no, no. They're not going to be able to get the pop. No, 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 no. So we're in the, literally eighty percent of the people here are squatters in this whole country. What are you talking about? We can't squat. It's our house. We're the ones that are buying it. It's not squatting. It's it's setting up. It's it's renovating, getting it ready. That's what are you talking about? We can't. And then here we are. Finally, they're saying, "Okay, here's your house," and there's someone else squatting in it. God damn it! Anyway, anyway, so I will. Um, we're supposed to go up there. I mean, I'm going to go up there tonight you know, to get the get the truck and uh, start moving. But just like look in my eyes. So that's that. That's that story. Um, that's <laughs> so. Hey, the the reason this is all a big deal. We don't have the reason we don't have like a commercial space because we don't sell anything here, man. We're not doing any commerce in this country. All we do is buy. We buy fabric. We buy fabric and material and hardware and things. We buy things, but we're not selling anything. At least not yet. I mean, we're not selling. We have no. There's no customers. We don't have any foot traffic. Um, but we also don't have enough stock or store. We don't require any stock or storage or space for a large warehouse, right? So it's like a unhappy middle ground. If we were a clothing store, we could easily go get a stall or storefront or space in the mall. Done. That's what we're gonna. We, that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna display our clothes and sell them. We don't have any clothes to sell, so we don't need a place to display clothes and sell them. Okay. Well, then you need a, 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 a warehouse space and an office park or something. No, I don't want a warehouse space and an office park. We don't. We don't have that much. We don't stock or store much fabric. All right, we're, we're not a giant company. We don't want to be a giant company. If we're a giant company, it means we need to do giant, giant jobs. We're not there yet. We, uh, we do smaller jobs. Um, maybe one day, but not now. I mean, the, the price jump from a house to a storefront to a warehouse is ridiculous, right? So... The problem is space. Space is limited here, right? So if you get a place with a lot of space, say a warehouse where no one else will go, where you can just focus on your business, that space uh, is valuable. So that's a warehouse space will be fifty thousand a month. That's crazy. Whereas a storefront might be ten or fifteen. Uh, even the smallest warehouse space would be 25 or 30, but then you have to see. Here's the thing: it's the way it works, right? So, say you get a storefront. Normally, you get a storefront, you get the top, you get bottom floor, and the top floor, right? Even if it was just like a little warehouse space, it's going to cost more. Little little shop space with street access. You don't have to have customers come in, of course. Uh, but also, we have a family. We have to live, right? And we don't have a we don't have a house for months and months. We've paid all this money. We don't have a house. So aside from a business space, we also have to rent a space for us to live in. Any business space is going to consume all of the money for the the space we would need, I mean, the money we would need to rent a house, right? A, a, a storefront, like I said, maybe it costs 15 or 20,000. We're we supposed to also rent a house for uh, another the five to ten, uh, especially to get fiber because for my teaching, right? So, so by then we're paying thirty thousand. 
if we're paying thirty thousand, we might as well pay fifty thousand. But if we pay fifty thousand for a warehouse space, it doesn't come with any living space. Uh, so now we have all of this warehouse space, and we only take up a small portion of it, and we still have to rent a place to live on top of that. Um, I, I just, the problem is finding the retail space that also has the living space that also has the fiber we need the good internet it's just a special case unique to me I need this good internet to, to do my uh, teaching so it's hard it's rough I mean what? I'm gotta rent two two places and it has to be affordable I there's nothing I can do about it so we gotta go to Eastwood. That's where we're going. Um, just because, I mean, this place that we're in now is pretty good. It's a nice little neighborhood, nice little subdivision. It's got fiber, just enough space for our machines and our small number of employees. Um, but then the landlord wants to fucking tax us. Uh, for no reason. I understand maybe she's, everyone's got their own problems and it's your prerogative what you want to do with your property but it's kind of fucked up to rent the property uh, to somebody and let them deal with all the goddamn let them deal with all the problems and then you come in the next month and be like oh this is a nice place now I can raise the rent fuck you man that's crazy damn it anyway anyway I'm sorry. I didn't mean to curse so much, but that's that does make me angry. That that's killing me. Um, so, but there is there aside from the bad news, there's good news. Business is good. Business is going well. Right, we're getting more and more orders, and our, our orders are getting uh, bigger for bigger jobs. You know, so we're getting more machines. We need to hire more people. We just need good people. I got a secretary, replacement secretary. You know, when I lost the last, I keep calling the secretary. It's easy to say secretary. Easier to say secretary than it is to say administrative assistant. I got a new assistant. Assistant. I got a new assistant. Um, when I lost the last one, it kind of just kind of like threw everything into a. a, a chaos spiral uh, because I I need an assistant we rely I rely on them to do their job and so I pay them very well uh, but it comes with responsibility and you got to be ready to take that responsibility on and it's just been hard to find someone who was willing to take on that responsibility uh, but now we have uh, a new assistant the cousin of one of the sewers see um, just Joanne you heard her talking to me a bunch I, I like Joanne she's fine we'll, we'll just see I'm trying to lay <laughs> lay the job on her carefully slowly um, we'll see once the whole load of the work is on her if she can carry it or not She's young, like the other secretaries have been. Uh, hopefully, she's hungry. I, I, it's hard for me to read her. I don't know. We'll see how it goes. But uh, she, so far, she's taking the job, and she says she wants to move with the company to Montel Band. We're going to provide. Uh, I, I hesitate to say free, but I think it's free. I think we're going to provide free housing for. Uh, the sewers that move with us you know so another reason why we need to be judicious and, and save money and get good rates you know we can't just get anything we, people need to live and work uh, I don't want them to work too far away from where they live and it's a whole it's a big juggling act that this woman has just like thrown a wrench in the, in the machine why I don't know I, I don't even know 
don't even know if it's greed. I mean, I'm, there may be some problem with us staying here. Or, or neighbors or something. I don't know. She doesn't even live here. What does she care what her neighbors say? I don't know. We're in business. So she wants more money. That's how I take it. anyway so that's that hopefully everything gets taken care of today as far as Peggy big goes because I do want the employees to get the benefits of working here you know what we do here is different it's harder it's different than what they're used to and it requires a higher caliber uh, of sewer and the ones we have are good Good source, they're high caliber, they do the job, we're getting it done. Um, so, I want them to feel that it's worth it to work here, that they get what they are, they get what they give. So, they need that packy Um Yeah, I think that's it. That's it for now. Uh, as far as jobs go, job run now. So this is off the top off the top of the dome so if I miss you you're not really missed because we have a sec we have an assistant Joanne who is on top of it all right and keeping everything in order and I'm, I'm getting her to keep everything in order more and more order I'm working on you know full computer you know automatic spreadsheets and all of that so that we take out that human error part like that's about to happen right so as far as jobs we got and this is in no particular order but mostly new to old <laughs> mostly new to old we got um, the woke eye masks another sample run um, you know, it's been a slight redesign upgrade based on our samples and other samples that they got and they came back to us and they said can you make this finalized design and see what we can do uh, so we're going to make some more samples and send those off quickly because they these ones don't actually have the eye ridge that was the big problem in our early days um, but then again they might have the eye ridge we just need to source them from somewhere else and, <laughs> and it's so I'm on so they still might be a big problem I don't know you know because now he wants the eye ridge we made was uh, fiber fill, was, but with fiber fill you can't get that um, machine-like consistency uh, of look. Uh, a structure. So he wants us to try and source some memory foam. But the problem is, and I don't know if he's going to be watching or not, this is just from my experience, right? Now, I uh, I can scientifically verify this if I go to some expensive store with a lot of eye masks and get like some VR goggles and some ski goggles and some uh, sleep masks and just try to find as many masks that have an eye ridge as possible to see their forms and functions, right? Their materials. Um, you know, I can go. You can go on the internet and look at marketing materials, but that's just not going to give me an accurate, uh, from a manufacturing standpoint, an accurate, uh, an accurate baseline of how these things are going to turn out in quantity, right? But from my experience, yeah, you because know, you, you never buy two. Nobody buys two VR goggles, right? So you get one VR goggle, it looks how it looks, and the cushion looks at cushion is how it is. You just assume they're all like that, but you don't actually know because you only have one. You buy a sleep mask, you only have one sleep mask, right? Your cushion, your eye, your eye ridge cushion looks how it looks. You just assume they all look like that, right? You see a picture on the internet of one perfect specimen, and you assume that they all look like that, but 
and the only way I could say for sure that it doesn't happen, that it's not true, is if I go find evidence that it's not true. And it, in this case, I may have to do that because I know, I know, I know what he wants. I see it. I have it in my mind's eye. I've seen the same perfectly smooth space, space-like texture and curves, right? No wrinkles, smooth perfectly straight invisible stitches and what I'm saying is I'm in the shit I'm in this monk I'm, I'm in this game I, I I look at clothes and things that are sewn together in a way you uh, you never have in your life you can't right I see it now it's it's like uh when you go in the matrix and you become the one and you see everything as the numbers i see the i see the individual stitches the different pieces of clothes right so you go in and you shop you're like oh that's a good pattern oh that feels nice oh look at that the look at the lines or whatever you may even inspect but you don't see it you can't right and i'm talking directly to every customer and uh, to the owner of the conscientious sleepwear, the woke sleep mask. And I'm not being negative or antagonistic. I'm just trying to be real. I'm just trying to be straight up. Right? If you go in the store and you find a shirt, find three of them. It's not going to be the same everywhere, right? Lift up the collar. I mean, lift up the cuff. Look at the seam. Now, you what you imagine, and what I'm certain, you think every professional shirt you get, zoom, 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 straight. They have machines, and it's, 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 look, look close. Not a single straight line on the shirt. It's the amalgamation of all of the pieces makes the shirts, makes your pants, makes your whatever look good but any individual portion looks like this it, no two cuffs are the same no two crimps no two stitching lines uh, I mean now of course there's some if, and I've said this in previous uh, vlogs about this topic the more automation the more standard of course of course, in order to get automated product, you have to buy automated quantities. Right? You're not going to buy five samples and get fucking robots to make it. It's not going to happen. It doesn't work like that. You're not going to buy 5,000 and get robots to make it. You're going to get poor people to make your 5,000 pieces. If you buy 50,000, I'll, a nigga will bust out some robots for you, okay? A nigga will bust out robots for 50,000 pieces, but you buy five, and I'm going to find poor people. To <laughs> it's, <coughs> it's a joke. <coughs> it's a joke. But what I'm saying is, every normal amount of product that is made in the entire world is made by poor people. The only things made by robots are super expensive things and super large quantities. Teslas are made by people. No, Teslas are made by people slash robots. The only things that are made by robots are, you know, fucking cars and, and Levi's, right? Levi's might be made by robots because Levi's is making five million pairs of Levi's, right? Of course they're going to use robots. It's faster, more efficient, and you get that consistency. But everything that is handmade is, is is unique. It's all unique and it's all different. And it does it's not clean. What you have what you have to what you have to realize with handmade is it's an amalgamation. It's uh, the the whole. It's the the product. The end result is the product of all of the components. Any individual component will not be perfect. There's no such thing as a perfect person and they cannot sew a perfect piece. But they can make something beautiful. Right? So 
these eye mask ridges and bringing it back this is what I'm talking about right the ones we made were made of it's called fiber fill and, and wrapped in uh, uh, like a hundred percent cotton uh, or maybe they use satin I don't remember uh, we had a version we made a bunch of versions I like the one that's wrapped in cotton but it's not as classy <laughs> it wasn't as classy as the ones uh, that were satin wrapped um, so you get a bunch and you're gonna see oh this one looks like this this one why is this stitch up here this stitch is down here the people that buy your mask they're only gonna buy one they're only gonna buy one they're only gonna ever see the one if you think about it from the perspective of your customer right they only have one your customers only have one maybe they have two and even if they have two they don't look at the goddamn stitches they, they put them on and they see if they can sleep in them. Now, now, now I'm not like blaming. I'm not don't I'm not accusing the the, the first set of samples. This is a, an evolving process to make something perfect and beautiful. I understand that, and I don't want you to think I'm like yelling at you, right? Because I know and you know that there were other problems besides the eye mask, besides the ridge. There was problems with the sizing and the shape. Um, the bulkiness it's a whole thing and I get it and it's evolving and it's getting better and better but as far as I did the ridge I don't want you to live and die by this ridge um, and maybe I'll send an email after this to get that level of commitment but just based on our conversations it, these ridges are not going to be made by robots so they're all going to be different they're all going to have their little imperfections but from the point of view of your customer they will not notice they will not see the imperfections just like you don't see the imperfections <coughs> in the clothes you are wearing on your body right now I swear to God turn your clothes inside out and look at the chaos that is underneath it's chaos it's crazy all you see is the outside and it's closed and it looks good as long as it's clean and there's no rips or major uh, printing or ink uh, uh, mistakes your clothes are made of craziness by people making a lot of clothes very fast there's no way around it you just don't notice and neither will the people who buy your products so the level of exactness that uh, you know we got some people who want samples and they get one sample and they say oh I'm gonna see the quality or whatever we send them something goddamn good and uh, they're like oh well there's some stitches out of uh, blah, 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 blah. the people who buy your clothes will not no, they're only going to buy the one. They're going to buy one piece of one unit. So they're going to get it and they're going to put it on and they're going to say, "This looks good on me. It feels good on me. Uh, it's not stabbing me or scratching me or itching me. Uh, so I like it. I get I get compliments when I wear it." What they're not going to do is they're going to say, they're not going to look at the stitch and make sure it's exactly one millimeter from the edge. Uh, the entire length of the stitch, uh, no one else that sees them wear it will even see that millimeter and they won't see it themselves. So all, all I'm saying about the eye ridge is that even though the old ones were made of fiber fill, they all may have been like rounded or look different or whatever you're thinking, uh, it's because of your perspective. You're, uh, you're the creator, the owner. Uh, you see a whole bunch of these things and nobody else who ever buys one from you will see a bunch. They will only see the one. They'll see the one that they buy. So even if you get a bunch and every eye ridge is different, slightly different, um, it doesn't doesn't matter. It doesn't doesn't actually matter. That's think of, think of, think about the the common complaint 
with clothes sizing. It's no two pieces of clothing are the same size. No stores use the same measurements. Uh, a small here, maybe a maybe a medium there, or or even even you hear the same complaint within one company. One uh, piece of clothes fits differently than another piece of clothes from the same brand. You know why that happens? Because things are made by people, and every piece is different. And it's hard to keep every measurement exact because nobody is a machine, right? The reason that that is such a common complaint is <coughs> because it doesn't affect the sales. It doesn't affect the sales, right? The people who buy the clothes, they only buy the one. They're going to find the one that fits them and they're going to buy that. So even if the whole lot of 10,000 is all different size, all the arms holes are different sizes, people are going to find it, they're going to see it, they like it, they're going to find the one on the rack that they like, be completely blind to all the other ones, no matter what, they're going to put it on, they're going to wear it, they're going to buy it, they're going to go home, they're going to be happy and they're going to uh, uh, post for the gram how great the clothes are. They're going to post for the gram how awesome this eye mask feels. How it looks. They didn't even see the other eye masks. Right? So even if they all look different, if they're all a different size, if they're all a different shape, if they're all different colors, even if they're all different colors, it doesn't matter because the people are only going to buy one. The only one who sees the differences is you and me. And I'm telling you it doesn't matter. I'm guaranteeing you it doesn't doesn't matter. And and even if it did matter, it's unavoidable. These differences, these small differences, these small aberrations, uh, or defects, are not noticeable by the people who are buying products. Uh, so I don't want you to live or die by these eye ridges. The uh, fiber fill, the eye ridges we made for you were very good. Now, if we can get them on the smaller form factor, I I imagine that these will be perfect. Um, but what you want is some space age. You want that uh, memory foam. It's going it to raise the price. It's going to raise the price of production. And not necessarily the quality of the product. That's the, that's the thing. You know, it's, it's not necessarily going to raise the quality. You're going to get some hard ass uh, memory foam. Memory foam works because it supports your whole body weight. Memory foam doesn't just sink onto your face it's not it's not jelly right it's just it keeps its shape it's a hard thing and if you just said it, it's going to be hard and, and unless it's uh, pulled tight against your face uh, it's going to let light in in the different angles um, it's just, I, don't know, I don't know but uh, we're going to find it we're going we're gonna to look for it look for that memory foam and, and you know we we make we make things and we make what people want we don't make our own stuff so if someone wants memory foam uh, on their face mask that's fine that's what we do uh, we figure out the price we figure out how to get it done and we do it um, but you know if the clothes if the things we make are to spec and the specs don't hold up to your imagination there's nothing we can do there's nothing we can do and there's some customers that they have something in their imagination and when it's created to spec it doesn't hold up to what they imagined or they had a they had an unrealistic idea of what the process was or what clothes are, are like nobody understands it until they're in it right uh, I no, I had no no idea. The people who make your clothes, their living conditions, their working conditions, <coughs> um, their skill levels, what they actually have to do, what it actually takes to make the piece of clothes versus the price, um, and then the ramifications of that as far as output and quality and consistency <coughs> <coughs> I don't know 
know what's going on. I guess I'm still getting over this sickness. Um, rundown. Sorry. A rundown. The rundown of uh, <laughs> of jobs. So eye masks. Uh, Twelve pieces eye mask and bags. Banesh. 40 pieces of suits, 13, 13, 13, of pink, white, and black, uh, in production right now, I'll send a pic as soon as I can, um, Renee Susie, I don't mean to say, uh, her whole name, but, um, but that is the name of the brand, so it's okay, Renee Susie brand, uh, swimwear, t-shirts, and, these uh, lace, lace tops, designer lace tops. They're actually going to be pretty nice. Uh, we still have to buy the lace. We still have to collect the money. <laughs> we haven't collected the money from that child yet. Um, Naira, we got a bunch of swimsuits and lingerie. Peg the amount that 10 of each style was like 12, 14, 16 styles. Uh, 16 styles of assorted lingerie and swimwear colors that we need to make. Uh, we have all of the materials for that, and that's what we are in the process of making. Tanya, dresses. Um, we got all the material almost done. We got 15 black plus some flowers, an un, undisclosed amount of extra flower design, uh, flower print dresses. We had lengthy discussions about what was happening with her job and uh, based on you know, her requirements and the way it all went down. But things are going well, and I want the people who work with us to be happy, to be satisfied. So even though we're giving her two dress styles completely free, uh, her order is almost done. So, but we're adding in just these extra dresses, extra extra flower dresses to. Be a little bit more wide range uh, for her product line that she gets. Just, just because, just because you know I like Tanya, I, I really do, and I hope the best for her brand. Um, her brand is in Live Ciano. Um, so I hope the best, and I, I just want her stuff to be good. We got Ben Lolo, uh, maternity wear. The job is finished. Um, it was an assorted uh, maternity blouses and dresses and nightgown type things with lace and print and mesh uh, uh, accoutrement. And also a, a snood. All done. All ready for shipping. Just need to contact us and set that up what else I wish I was looking off screen at a list but I, <laughs> I have no list Joanne is okay I said I say always the same thing for a secretary they need to one be able to understand me and two do what I say <laughs> do everything I tell them to do um, that understand me part it's a little bit of a struggle with your hands. Um, and then I also say, if you don't understand, you need to ask me. And so, it's the combination of that not understanding and then not asking. That's the problem that I seem to have with your hand. I'll say something, and then her face is good. I'm 
just like, did you, did you hear what I said? And she heard it. She didn't understand it. You understand saying, uh, what? Oh, I didn't understand. I didn't understand you. Or what did you say again? Can you say it again? Please repeat. Maybe I need to come up with like a hand sign, just like a quick. So that she, so that I know to repeat whatever I said. Um, it's just like, I, I don't want to repeat myself. I've clearly said, get me some coffee. But, you know, she didn't catch every word, so it's a problem. But, we'll, you know, we'll work on that. We'll see how that goes. We're moving soon, so you before you pack up and move your whole life you really gotta be committed so if she moves with us I'm just gonna assume that she's in and but the, the problem is I, I really need to lay the full weight of the job on her before that happens uh, like tomorrow when she comes in I, I, I'm just gonna have to hit her hard with the with the hardest day with the heaviness and see if she can handle it because I don't want her to move to another what is essentially a state another province um, far away from her home uh, for this job if she's not going to be able to do it if she doesn't like it if she's going to quit uh, I, I don't want her to be trapped here right I want someone who wants to be here wants to who's ready to learn to take full advantage the opportunity that they have by working with me and working for our band. So I really need a, um, uh, ultimately a, not just a strong English speaker, but uh, a go-getter, like uh, really enthusiastic or or really uh, responsible, subservient person. So either you got to be a go-getter who wants to move up the corporate ladder and is willing to work hard and suck up to the boss or you need to be someone who is um, naturally submissive and listens very well with no ambition and just will do exactly what I tell them to do with no extra. That's fine too. That's fine with me. Do exactly what I tell you to do. We'll be good. Just do that. Or work really hard, take advantage get the knowledge and the skills that I have and use that to uh, advance your own career um, do that either one is fine with me I, just, I need somebody to do the, do the job so <coughs> I don't have a list um, where was I uh, Luciano Naira Nice to see. Um, Banesh. Woke. Let me think what else. We got um, Sergio. We got Salt Lemon. Salt Lemon. Uh, we got uh, samples and production. So they paid half for production order. It's tactical vest, which I showed the pink from. Printed, printed straps, which are really popular now. Everybody's getting printed straps. Tactical vest, uh, work like a work jump suits, overalls, work overalls, uh, and a fanny pack. Um, I think in total it's 200 pieces. Uh, but we gotta make the samples rush job oh also rush job for Jacorian um, I don't know the name of his her his, their brand uh, they have an event and they got a specialized a special order piece uh, which I do need to get so that's something I need a Joanne that's good. To, I need Joanne to get on the ball about that. Um, the only thing, the, the, it's just the understanding, and I haven't laid the full brunt of every like of everything she needs to do. She, I, I, 
I haven't stressed the second brain aspect of the job like I should or like I'm about to an assistant really has to like I, and I said this before to I think Ariane or someone else um, that in the US all our movies about the assistant are always like the innocent um, but uh, ambitious uh, person goes to the big city and then they have a boss that is evil uh, and they work they dedicate their lives to that boss in order to please them uh, and so they learn their whole schedule and they learn what kind of coffee they like and they learn the, the, the dog's name and they and they're all and then the whole movie is just this assistant running back and forth and doing things wrong and trying to figure out and make the way and get it right before the boss even asks for it they are trying they are their whole world is consumed with uh, supporting and pleasing their boss uh, so I think in the US we have an idea that that's what an assistant does an assistant dedicated to the person that they uh, work for uh, I don't know if there's the movies like that uh, the assistant movies are like are, are like that uh, here are, are like that I don't uh, I don't know you know all movies the assistant is heroic because they give up their entire life and their love life and everything and their dreams for this boss and at the end they get recognition from the boss after they have after after they have given up everything and they are become the perfect right hand man for the boss uh, the boss who's been watching them the whole time and appreciates it gives them the opportunity to move up and do their dreams right they always they give up their romance they give up their friends they give up whatever it takes to give up their whole day to their boss and that's so when I think of an assistant that's what I'm thinking of um, and I'm fully prepared to if you give up everything to get this job done give you everything you deserve that's I mean that's that's the transaction I, I think of for an assistant so uh, if you are an assistant type or you want to be you think you are can learn the schedule learn what I do and then make it seamless for me to do what I do uh, then this may be the job for you uh, honestly again she's a young girl like the others um, uh, so I don't I don't know if she's a go-getter like I want. She, she, you know, right now she's adequate. Right now she's okay. Is she a go-getter? I don't know. We'll see. And the problem is, if she's not, and I put it all on her, and then she quits, again, I'm left with no assistant. Uh, I Honestly, I don't know what to do about it. Because even uh, if I... After she goes, we'll hire an, uh, another cousin or something. Uh, we'll hire a different cousin, cousin's daughter or cousin's son to do the job. And you know, the thing about nepotism is like uh, sometimes family feels entitled or they don't feel as motivated. Uh, so I don't know. I don't know. But in the end, uh, but it, uh, then again, I, I want to give family all the opportunities in the world. You know, if there's a chance, if there's something here for them so that they can get something, I want to give it to family before I want to give it to someone else. So, yeah, I don't know. It's, it's hard, man. This is dilemmas that I've never had to deal with or been a, been a, a party to. I don't, I don't know. So, it's, it's 
it's hard. All I know is I need somebody good to do this job. While Joanne is good so far, we'll see. I hope she stays good. I do. Uh, she's fine. But I, I tried to ask her today, like, uh, some questions about to probe her ambition. Uh, I didn't really get <laughs> any ambitious answers, if you, only, if you know what I mean. But then at the same time, there's a language barrier. She has to work a little harder than some of the other girls to understand me. Um, so it could just be a language barrier and maybe she is ambitious and just couldn't express it to me. Oh, I, need a t I need a tutor, a teacher. I need a Tagalog teacher. That reminds me, I need to get her to find me one. Um, I need to get her to find me a Tagalog teacher. So, that's it. Thank you all for watching. Uh, I'm Dan from Ari Dan Sewing. Oh, no, 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 no. I was in the middle of talking about the jobs. Or dash, right? Samples are done. They are ready to ship. So I need to sh I need to ship the samples to Ireland for. Uh, but here's the problem, right? So Ordesh ordered. Uh, she paid half. They paid half up front for their production order, and that's fine. It's good. And, and I was off. I said, pay pay for the production. We'll send the first set as samples. So here we are, but the thing is, the fabric they wanted uh, was unavailable for a time, and then it became available, but what they need is something that is microwavable, uh, and when it became unavailable, I could not test for certain if it was safe, microwave safe, uh, but we went ahead with the with the, with the order and now it's available and I have it and I need to test it in the microwave I don't know if it will stand up to the scrutiny uh, so it's like a in position like do I make the sample out of this stuff that may not be perfect um, or do I and, and let them see before I offer alternatives so this is really it's mostly just like a personal like a sales thing right so I want to offer the best value I want to offer the most help I want to be upfront and honest but then at the same time I, I want to be successful and efficient and I want this process to go smoothly um, so Ordesh originally gave us examples of the type of fabric of the type of print they want for their fabric uh, and over the course of dealing and talking that that their print choices are a bit different than their original example so whereas normally someone would give me an example and then I say oh okay this is this miss. Pick one of these. These are all going to be good. These all fit your criteria. Now I'm in the position. I, uh, I'm in the situation where it's like, okay, so the original is very fun and light. This one is fun, but I almost said artistic. But fun, but intentional. Um, whereas before it was like light blue, pink flamingos, slightly random. Now it's slightly random, black or deep violet with uh, artistic, like artistic more well-defined prints, right? The pink flamingos were like cartoony, 
wear it. I'm just going to show you. Because this is one of them. This one's fine. Uh, this is the purple peacock. Right? This doesn't look like a kid's hat. This looks like a, a black woman's shower cap. <laughs> you know, it's like a that's purple and peacock feathers. Purple peacock feathers. Quality's all there. It's all good. It's all great. Uh, but this, I mean, it's got little polka dots in it. Fun polka dots. But it's not quite the same style as their original uh, choice or their original examples. So it's hard for me to find their, their preference for offering an alternative. It's in, you, the way I see the sales process is the people come to me because they want something. Uh, and they think they know what they want. Nobody really knows, but they come to me because they have an idea of what they want. And then I am supposed to take that idea and sell them something. But in this case, the idea is more nebulous. I don't quite know. I don't have the most clear or well-defined uh, idea of their idea. So it's hard for me to sell them something. Um, and my key to sell is confidence, belief. Uh, I have to I have to, in order for me to sell you something, I, I don't want to sell you something that you don't want, right? So you have an idea of what you want. I take that idea, solidify it, and sell you something that you actually want. That's the key, right? I'm selling you something that you want, that you need, that's good for you. I'm, I'm not a bad person. I'm not, I'm not going to sell you rat poison. I want to sell you good fabric, good prints that you will like. So I have to know, I have to be able to tell what you like. Um, you're spending a lot of money with me. So you have to be confident that I can provide you uh, the correct service for your money. And the only way to do that is if I am confident and I project confidence. Uh, and right now I'm just like, I, I'm, I, have, I, I have alternatives. I have alternatives in place. Uh, but I have to figure out the best way to present them so that they accept them. Uh, because if I come back and I say, oh, well, your, your original choice, uh, even though I said it's good, it's not good. Trust me with this new choice. Now, that, now they should trust me with the new choice uh, because the the original choice it just wasn't available. I couldn't test it, uh, but we have to move forward. We can't stop in, in, in hopes. Uh, and I knew I could get the original choice. It just was a matter of finding it again. And when I found it and was able to test it, which I still haven't tested it, I'll test it tonight uh, after this go put it in the microwave and see what happens. That's really all I can do. Uh, that's what I have to do, put it in the microwave, see what happens. If nothing happens, then good, we're gold, and we can just go forward. Um, so we'll see. Um, but I think some, I think the, I think it's either going to melt or something not ideal is going to happen when I put this stuff in the microwave. And uh, so... I need to, I have an alternative that's, I think a good amalgamation of the original in, the original idea and the new idea uh, combined. Uh, I have to figure out the words and the way to present that. Because see what I've done, they, what my job is, is they give me their idea of what they want and then I sell them what they actually want. So I've already sold them what they actually want. And then I have to come back and say, okay, I've given you what you want, 
but now you can't have it but you can't have this instead and not even you can have this it needs to be you have to take this instead uh, and even though that sounds bad it's it's not bad it's it, it's still what they want but I have to convince them that it is more what they want than what they got it's it's rough that's but that's the job and the problem is if I don't have a good secretary I I, I gotta get the, the mind space to to understand and communicate effectively with someone I've never met over the internet. That's my challenge. That's my job. Um, and in order to do that, I have to just I have to pull information and feeling and meaning out of very limited context so that I can so that I can identify with the person we can be I, I consider I like everyone we work with based on what I know about them right I have to find out and know about these people so that I can connect with them and give them what they like um, I mean you're not going to give an enemy a present you give presents to your friends so uh, I think we're all we're friends but we're just not friendly. <laughs> that, I don't know. So I, I need to uh, make them understand. Normally, I'm, the customer doesn't need to understand my point of view. But in this case, I have to get them to understand my point of view so that they will accept this alternative. Um, and if they watch this before I do that, I just need you to know that everything's good. I'll know for sh certain that everything is on track and perfect shortly um, when I test this fabric. Uh, other than that, I think that's everybody. And if it's not, I've been sidetracked for so long, I don't. I'd have to start all the way over to get the last little bits. Oh, no, I don't. There's the track uh, suit. There's Eddie Terstig, which is done. Oh, it's being finished right at this moment. There's Samuel Jones, who has um, three pieces. Uh, he has a sweat, sweatshirt, t-shirt. And a trouser. Now, all of those have a unique feature about them that made them um, harder to to manufacture, right? So they have like very big. He calls them mock collars, like a costume, like something that's not normally the collar size. So uh, and cuffs. So I, we had to special, specially create these things for him because. If he had got them in quantity, got a production order, we could bulk order the custom uh, collars and cuffs, so like that, put them on, ship them done. But he only got one, right? You can't custom order one piece at any for any reasonable price, right? What I say in my emails or when I talk to people is that our seamstresses are some of the best in the world. They've worked literally worked and sewn Gucci clothes Ralph Lauren Ann Taylor Express Haynes Wrangler jeans um, Victoria's Secret right they are experienced they make the best clothes in the world so if you buy one piece of clothes based on the quality of the fabric and the sewing the you have to expect couture level Gucci level clothes. So think of buying one Gucci shirt, right? Gucci doesn't pay, uh, you know, a hundred and twenty dollars or whatever uh, to manufacture a Gucci shirt, shirt because they manufacture a thousand Gucci shirts, so they pay less when you want to buy one Gucci shirt, you have to pay 
Gucci price. And that's what you're getting here, is you're getting your brand of shirt at the same quality that you would get a Gucci shirt or something like that, right? So you have to expect to pay a, a high, high price for a, one, a single piece. You pay retail, because we pay retail price for the materials to make the shirt. Um, only by buying bulk can you save money. So what happened is Samuel Jones ordered uh, custom couture level clothes and he still got a super, super good price. He paid nowhere near Gucci price. Um, but that's just what I see in my email to expect. Um, although nobody does. Unless it's like a really complicated or uses a lot of materials or printing or something. Um, it's still an amazing deal even for one piece based on the quality. Uh, which I should probably increase the price of the sample just I don't know maybe maybe I will maybe, I'll, maybe I really will charge like a Gucci price for a one piece uh, just just because uh, that's what you have to expect but anyway so he got one piece it requires us to custom make um, the collars and the cuffs so the timeline is going so so the way it works, the way everything works is if you want perfection, you pay for it. Uh, if you want something done fast, you pay for it. But if you want a low price, low price is a slow price, right? So it's going to take longer to make for that same low price. Unless I think I, I've communicated that to him. So they just have to accept that and um, they seem to have accepted that reality that, that, uh, that in, uh, oh man, I'm, I'm fading <laughs> I'm fading I have to drive those four hours tonight to Montalban to get my Jeep and then drive it back to pack it to move and then drive it back again to move the things. It's four hours. Uh, anyway. Anyway. Um, I think that's it. Let's say Renee Susie and her very cool lace. Blouse, nice top. It's got like bell sleeves. It's like nice trim uh, Chinese uh, buttons. I, don't, I, don't, I guess they're called Chinese buttons. They're the like the sh string. They're not, and then a loop that you just put it through, and it just tension holds it. Um, I think those are called Chinese buttons or Chinese closures. I don't know. I'm not exactly sure and what those are called. I should look that up. Um, I also, we also bought some fabric just for me. I don't know. Now I'm like, uh, I want some shirts, man. I want some clothes made. I, there's no way I can just justify to myself going to the store and paying for clothes and I make clothes right but then every I can't get divert someone from <laughs> working on a customer's job to make some shit for me that doesn't make any sense that's then I really am just paying the same amount as I would for a shirt because of the lost revenue it costs to make my shirt astronomical not worth it uh, so it's like a dilemma am I just gonna look like a bum or am I gonna buy clothes like a normie I make clothes man that's crazy you am I gonna hire a dedicated seamstress to make just my clothes 
I'm not Mr. Moneybag. So this ain't Monopoly. I, I can't do that. That's crazy. If I hire another seamstress, she needs to <laughs> sell customer clothes so we make money. I don't know. It's I don't know. I don't know what I don't know what that dilemma is called, but it sucks. It's it's horrible. Do I, do I just have to buy clothes like a normal person? Who would take me seriously as a clothing manufacturer if I buy clothes? If I buy clothes. <laughs> <coughs> you meet someone at the store. <clears throat> oh, what do you do, sir? Oh, I make uh, designer clothes. This way to the fitting room, sir. And you just look. Am I lying? Am I a liar? Who would believe me? Who would believe that? That doesn't make any sense, right? So, anyway, that's uh, another. I just had it. Another job. I just had it. I was talking about. I didn't forget about you. Whoever you are, you think I forgot. I didn't forget, I just remembered. I just can't recall the name. Or what we're supposed to make. <laughs> I can't recall the name. Or what we're supposed to make. My nose looks swollen over here. It's because wow, the last time I drove up to the new house, uh, the new space, I was driving and a fucking wasp or some shit grabbed my nose. Like I'm just driving, driving the motorbike, and then boom, something hit me in the face. I'm like, oh, shit, you know, I'm used to that. Driving the motor motorbike from the motorcycles. Stuff hits you in the face, it's fine. It bounces off. But this one hit me and then I just kept feeling it. It wasn't moving. I was like, oh, it must be stuck. And so I try to brush it. That shit. Once I start brushing that shit, I said, I'm like, ah, ah. <laughs> and then I'm like, ah, I'm freaking out. Something was like holding, first it was just holding on for its life so it doesn't get blown away in the you know, wind, like the mountain wind. Um, but then once I start fucking with it, that shit started poisoning me. Uh, and and of course, I saw it frantically. I ripped its body in half and just whatever was grabbing just stayed grabbing. I'm like, ah, oh, poison. Drive. Avoid all the potholes and rocks. <laughs> and so then I'm trying to drive with one hand and trying to pick out pincers or, 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 or stingers or whatever it is stuck in my nose. And then for the next hour, I'm just like, oh, God damn it, this hurts. And I'm squeezing, trying to squeeze the poison out. It sucks, but so it doesn't hurt anymore, but it's just like swollen. <laughs> oh, gosh. It's, I am dreading this trip. Uh, it's going to be all night. All night just driving. Ugh. Driving a motorbike in the pitch black up the fucking mountain full of potholes and loose rocks and where it rains and it's always muddy and it's the, the trike only has one brake I really should not drive the trike up but I, I mean I'm gonna drive it'll be the last time so I'll drive the trike up and I'll leave it up there and then um, drive the jeep the jeep is a second hand jeep Turning radius is ridiculous. I dread. I dread what I'm going to have to do to drive this thing in the uh, in town. I don't. I don't know, man. And the proportions are all off. It's like extra long in the front, but maybe like extra long in the back, but not as long as it feels like it is. It's shorter. Uh, so low to the ground. Uh, I have buyer's remorse on this, on this thing. I definitely have buyer's remorse 
Korea is cheap. Because it's not a cheap. It's it's a okay. It's like a cheap that was converted. Uh, I don't even know. I don't know the whole history of these things. It's like a jeep, so it's like a like a small bus. Um, it's ultra bare inside, but it was shortened and dropped down. In the front, it's like a old military jeep. So it's got those long, big old World War II fronts, engine compartments. I don't know. It's rough. It's got a bunch of mosquitoes in there. It's open. Uh, this is not going to be pleasant, but it's what we could afford. But I mean, I guess technically could have afforded to get a, a new car, like get a loan, you know, but I can't. I cannot, especially without uh, a permanent place, permanent residence, or, or, or sh uh, 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 manufacturing space, there's no way I could justify taking on a loan, paying an extra uh, fifteen or 16000 a month, and we don't even have a, uh, our own place to live? Come on. There's no way. I can't pay 16000 a month, plus 8000 a month for rent, plus uh, 10000 a month for shop rent, uh, plus the you know, electricity as we scale up, it's getting bigger and bigger. So electricity bill seven thousand. Of course, this landlord has two months deposit. She got she's got nine thousand of um, deposit, right? My deposit plus the work we've put into this house, improving it. Plus, when we moved in, there was old utility bills from the last tenant that she didn't pay. She said, I can't afford to pay them. You pay them, and I'll take that off of your rent next month. Oh, this burns my bridge. This burns me up. So, for I'm like, yo, oh, it's hard for me to not be vindictive or petty right now. I'm still going to be slightly petty. I'm not paying that. You let your net, yeah, whatever. You got a nice place now. You're going to charge more rent. Wait till you show them this fucking electric bill. Show them that. Hmm? You're not making no money off of me. You're not making no money off of me. You're not doing it. Scam me. God. Fuck no. I hate her. Anyway. It's just one bad experience. That's not the, my other landlord, the house landlord, has been perfectly fine and pleasant. I really appreciate him. You know, I, I regret that we had to leave, but the house didn't have fiber, and I can't do my teaching with the slow internet. You know, Philippines, they'll tell you, they just, where's my hair go? This, this way? Yeah. They'll tell you, they just don't have good internet options here. It's hard to get fast internet. I mean, they're rolling out fiber, you know, and right now I got the fiber. It's expensive, but worth it. I have to teach a class in an hour or so. And then I'll sleep uh, and uh, till midnight. And then I will drive drive up to uh, Montalban, get the, tr get the Jeep and drive back. And then there'll be another work day and hopefully I have prepared enough to Slam Joanne with work so she gets that real Ari Dan feeling of what it's like to work here. Anyway, that's it. I'm done. I'm Dan from Ari Dan. If I forgot your job, I didn't forget. We have it. It's we're doing it. Uh, it's just, I just at this moment have been talking for two and a half hours and I forgot. It. So, uh, thank you for watching. This has been. Uh, Ari Dan Sewing Vlog. I'm Dan. Peace.